Among the many Americans in London for the games is presumptive Republican nominee Mitt Romney. He's at the start of a three-nation trip intended to burnish his foreign policy credentials. But Romney, who ran the 2002 Winter Olympics in Salt Lake City, Utah, irked his British hosts by appearing to question their ability to stage the games. Our country and, uh, his stumble came in an interview in London yesterday. NBC's Brian Williams asked whether, to Romney's experienced eye, the British appeared ready to host the games. You know, it's hard to know just how well it were turn out, will turn out. There are a few things that were disconcerting, the stories about the uh, private security firm not having enough people. Uh, the su supposed strike of the immigration and customs officials, that obviously is not something which is encouraging. Today, in a visit to Olympic Park, Prime Minister David Cameron issued a bit of a rebuke. We are holding an Olympic Games in one of the busiest, most active, bustling cities anywhere in the world. I mean, of course it's easier if you hold an Olympic Games in the middle of nowhere. I and mean, this is a busy, bustling city, so inevitably you're going to have challenges. And later, after meeting at 10 Downing Street with Cameron, Romney took pains to backtrack. I'm, I'm very delighted with the prospects of a uh, highly successful Olympic Games. Uh, what I've seen shows uh, uh, imagination and forethought and a lot of organization and expect the games to be highly successful. For a look at how this is playing out in the social media world, we're joined by two journalists from the website Daily Download. Lauren Ashburn is the site's editor-in-chief, and Howard Kurtz is Newsweek's Washington Bureau Chief and host of CNN's Reliable Sources. So, Lauren, this uh, certainly has been heavily covered in newspapers and in the wires. How is it playing out in the social media realm? Yeah, it's not playing out very well. I think I mean, that for Romney. For, yes, for Romney. I think that people feel that he doesn't get it, like showing up to a dinner party and criticizing the host's table even before he sits down. And I believe that from reading this on Twitter and Facebook and blogs, that it hasn't done him any favors. I'd say this is playing as a gold medal gaffe in the first Olympics event. One person tweeted, fulfilling vow not to insult Obama while overseas. Romney insults PM David Cameron instead. I'm not so sure it was a gaffe. I think Romney wanted to express concern about security, a deliberate message, perhaps to remind people that a decade ago when he ran the Salt Lake City Olympics, there were no security problems. But Prime Minister Cameron had a quick rejoinder to that. He did. Saying, uh, if you want to hold the games in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> yeah, my guess, yeah, this right. is London. <laughs> So has the Obama campaign tried to make hay out of this? They have online. They have been out there set, talking about this and other comments that he has made about Anglo-Saxon, which we can talk about. But explain that. Yeah, in fairness, it wasn't Romney who, who said, as quoted by the British paper, The Telegraph, that Obama didn't understand the Anglo-Saxon heritage shared between the United States and the United Kingdom. It was two unnamed Romney advisors quoted by the paper. Romney has pushed back against that, saying he doesn't know who these people are. Uh, so it's a classic British press jumping on unnamed sources but, kind of story. Right, but this was also much more negative in tone in the way it was covered and perceived. It, they said this that Romney Comment about this comment Anglo about Anglo-Saxon, yes. They said that he's like Sarah Palin in a suit without lipstick and he can't talk about Mormonism, his job as a governor or Bain. All he has to do is talk about the fact that he's white. There's a racial undertone to it, but again, we don't know who said, who said it or how close they are or not to the Romney Is campaign. it fair to say that this is the kind of little false step that in the old media era would be worth a cycle in the news, but because of this social media environment, it's just relentless. It is. If you look at a chart of the Anglo-Saxon term and how it played out on Twitter over a period of 24 hours, you can see nothing from the searching for the term Anglo-Saxon to this, zoom. to a little bit down, to another big zoom. Gives it an extra half-life. And how has the Romney campaign responded to all the criticism on all of this? Well, Romney himself has tried to distance himself and his campaign from the blind quotes that appeared in and the And how about the comments about uh, He has Britain. backed off a little bit, walking it back, as we oh, say in politics, yeah. trying to soften that language. Now, Lauren, separately in the Twitter world, there's been this new little, I don't know, controversy, I guess, about whether the Romney campaign has been buying Twitter followers. What's that all about? So normally with Twitter, what you do is you sign up for Twitter and then people follow you. The charge is that Romney and Romney's folks have actually gone to a Twitter agency, paid money, and bought people to follow him. So take a look here at our graphic that we've got together here. These are Twitter followers that 
Romney had on July 20th. By July 23rd, in the morning, he had 819 so he started at 673,000 and jumped in really a period of a day and a half to 819,000. Well, Margaret, I, let me just jump in to say I talked to Romney's digital guru, Zach Moffat, who <laughs> flatly denies that the campaign had any involvement in trying to buy followers. But he says anyone can buy followers and send them to someone else. There are companies that do this for a fee where they will uh, vacuum up uh, <laughs> often fake accounts with funny names and use it to pad your total and suddenly it looks like you're real popular. So even the fact that Obama has far more followers than Romney, for all we know, some of those are bought? Yes, of course. Uh, they could be bought. But the real thing about Twitter to keep in mind is that what's important is engagement. So the way that they can gain votes and popularity is by average Americans interacting with the president, sending him notes or his campaign staff notes, they send them back. Those are what they call engaged followers. If you buy followers, it doesn't really get you anything except the perception Interesting that you're doing well. Because the Romney campaign also makes this point about the numbers. For example, on Facebook, the president has 27 million likes, uh, uh, Romney has 2.7 million. Uh, they claim that, uh, that their followers are much more engaged, their fans, their like. Right. And the same with Twitter. He has a lot more. But I guess my question is, Lauren, we look at this chart. He's got 17 million. Mitt but Romney. he's not in first place in <laughs> no, Twitter. No, he's lines. not in first place. And what's more, does it really matter? That is always the age-old question that people ask about Twitter. Look at First this all, how, many, how many is Lady Gaga? Right, that's what I was going to say. Lady Gaga has 27.4 million followers. The president, 17 million. Mitt Romney, 819,000 after the alleged and then, buying. And then we looked up, we wanted to see what an average person, maybe an average politician would have. We looked up the mayor of Green Bay. Wisconsin. Jim Schmidt, he has 579. He probably didn't buy those. No, <laughs> I think those were earned. It may not matter all that much except in terms of uh, amplifying the message of the campaigns. Well, Howie and Lauren, thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. And on our website, watch a 2002 NewsHour interview with Romney on Olympic security shortly before that year's Winter Games in Salt Lake City.